This video is in response to my subscribers, Pete and Tim. They ask similar questions about what kind of bikes I've had and, and why I chose and what's my favorite. Instead of just going and what's my favorite, I'm going to list the 25 bikes I've had and I'm going to list them from worst to best. So don't cheat and go to the end and find out which one's the best. If I say something that offends you, and maybe you've owned one of these bikes, I apologize. That's not my intention. It's just my opinion of that particular bike. You may have seen some of these photos in previous video in November, but I'm limited because some of those, some photos have only got a few of those bikes. Out of the 25 bikes, only I have only bought two for transportation, and number 25 is one of those. The Zuki 250 I bought used to get around while I was doing ground launch cruise missile initial qualification training in Tucson, Arizona in 1986. It was better than a bicycle, but by not much. This bike was bought because this is all I could afford at the time. It was sitting in a dealer's corner gathering dust, and um, I bought it and rode it for, I don't know, a lot of years. It handled poorly, it was slow. Had an unreliable starter, which is why it's near the bottom. I bought this motorcycle just after I got out of the Army in 1977. I thought I was being clever by buying this shaft drive motorcycle instead of that Suzuki GS750. Turns out I should have got the GS750 because this bike was had it overheated in the middle cylinder a lot and had a very touchy throttle. Number 22 might surprise some folks. It's the 2010 Thunderbird 1600. It's a beautiful bike. I replaced the speedometer twice. It had some coolant leaks when I first got it. I never got used to the gr no ground clearance. Kind of hurt my riding style. Nor did I get used to being locked into one seating position or the forward controls. I fell in love with this bike, number 21, just looking at it through the dealer's window. Unfortunately, it drank oil like sailor drinks on shore leave. It was very smooth but it absolutely had zero soul. As a it was, I was disappointed in this motorcycle. I had a bike just like this one. It looked just exactly like this. This is not my bike but this provided me my initial excursion in a motocross as a youngster. I did really well finishing second and third in my first two races. Unfortunately the officials thought I was a little bit too aggressive and I was using other riders for traction so they asked me to leave and not come back and that was the end of my motocross days. Number 19 is a 2008 Tiger 1050. It's better in every way than my 2001 955 Tiger except neither my wife nor myself liked it as much and never did click with this orange Tiger. Nothing wrong with the bike I just never did click with it. This bike originally came from my one of my buddies, Brian, who died. Uh, my, then a, another one of my buddies, Rich, bought it, and Rich gave it to me. And I kept it for about five or six years before selling it. It's a pretty bike. It's really sexy with those D&D &D exhaust system. But it's a little slow and bouncy on the suspension. Starting with this bike going, continuing on, are bikes I really did like and didn't view those as any kind of mistakes or anything. This is a 94 gas fund 500, the only sidecar I've ever had. It was a lot of fun, but it did require a lot of upper body strength that I did not know prior to buying this bike, but a lot of fun. The 1996 Thunderbird here is on the left and number 18 is on the right. I sold this to myself when I was a sales manager. Did a good job of negotiation. I outfitted this with a Corbin seat and a stay tuned exhaust, which is great. Um, I, my fondest memory with this bike is slaying a Harley out on the street. It was awesome. Number 15, a 2006 Triumph Scramble. I rode this one and I had a lot of good fun riding it out in the, on the desert trails and logging roads, but I did it very, very slow. This bike is a, you can do a lot of things on this bike, but it's really not suitable for any all day runs at high speeds, which I learned the hard way. This 250 I bought in, in Germany for transportation, but it turned out to be a much more than that. I rode it uh, all over the place. I put some Z bars and raced a gearing on it so I could ride out in the Audubon. But mainly I used it to race um, Porsches down, down the mountains. This is a 
life-saving motorcycles as far as sanity goes living in an army barracks. Number 13, the Kawasaki A7 Avenger. My first motorcycle that I owned is very quick as long as you had 20 or 30 spark plugs with you. There'd be tons of Hondas and cars with it to drag strip on this, this bike. It used one of my many lives here on this one. Is this was the motorcycle that I had the head-on collision with a semi when I was still in high school. I was a partner on this bike in 2013 and bought it outright in 2016 to take to Bonneville in 2016. We got very close to 200 miles an hour. Uh, we got to 196.7 miles an hour and we got also very close to crashing. And uh, as soon as we got back the next week I sold it to Mr. Bill's son Jay. It's way too much temptation for me to have it for a street bike. I bought this from my very kind neighbor sold it to me. It only had that 3,500 miles on it. When I bought it, it was in great shape. Got it running and rode it for a couple years before selling it for about four times what I paid for it to a collector. But this money was used for a good cause, helped me finance my Bonneville Salt Flats trip. But really love this bike. From this point on are bikes that I would buy again. This is my mom. It's the only time she's ever sat on one of my motorcycles. I bought this bike used, used it and road raced it for a couple years pretty successfully. Uh, it was not a good street bike for me because it brought out the bad mean and all because it always liked to wheelie. This 2003 T100 was my number nine bike and probably the sweetest riding bike I've ever owned. I remember, remember selling it to finance something or other I forgot now but the guy I bought it promptly told it I still feel guilt, guilty about letting this one go. This bike being number eight might surprise some of you because it vibrated badly, it killed batteries and chains, and I spent thousands of dollars on trying to make this bike just right, which never did happen. I said I clicked with this bike and I put something like 30,000 plus miles on it. I rode it several 550 mile days, and when I sold it, I sold it for what I paid for it new. It took me a while to get my head around this roulette green bike. Uh, it's probably about as ugly as number 25 Suzuki 250. I put 36,000 miles on this bike and loved every mile of it. My wife and I had one trip that was over 5,000 miles. No trouble, I had no trouble finding it in the parking lot because it stood out. And number six, the Royal Enfield Classic 500. Light, cheap, and my eyes a beauty. Just like looking at it. Never had so much fun riding 50 miles an hour in my life. I'll probably be able to ride this bike well into my 80s. I wasn't expecting to buy a BMW again, but since I saw this Lupine Blue machine, I fell in love with it. I didn't expect much in terms of performance and handling, but I have been pleasantly surprised on both counts. It just needs a little bit better wind protection, and I would lower the foot pegs just a little bit for a longer ride. But it's been a big surprise, a pleasant surprise. By all accounts from all the family members, this is the prettiest bike I've ever owned. It's been mod modified from 55 to 85 horsepower. I was able to run 140 miles an hour at Bonneville in 2016. It still looked like new when I sold it to Mr. Bill after owning it. Ten wonderful years. A great bike. This is number three after only three months and eventually may become our best bike. It's easy and comfortable to ride. It handles nice and has, it's great for two-up touring. Probably the only thing that holds this bike back is that Triumph didn't offer it, it in any great colors. Come on, Triumph. This is my second favorite bike, but it's probably my best bike I've ever had in terms of handling, performance, and, and, and looks. It's, it's a great bike. It's got a peach of an engine, and it's, it's comfortable for 200-mile days. And it's the aesthetics of this bike are just outstanding. Can't say enough good things about this bike. My number one favorite has to go to the bike that I own for 45 years. This Kawasaki 350 triple two stroke handle better than its two bigger other brothers. I love the style. I crashed this bike, poor bike, racing and showing off more than the other 24 bikes combined. If the guy who bought this bike ever gets back to me and restores it, I'll buy it in a heartbeat and treat it like the old gentleman it is.